Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. This is the weekly news wrap-up for Friday, May 11th, 2018, the WNW 334. I was shocked to get my copy of the USA Today Thought Shaping today and find on it actually a at least a neutrally positive story, a gesture of goodwill, talking about the the Korean deal. Of course, I don't know if they give Trump all the credit he deserves. I mean, he's been nominated supposedly for a a Nobel Peace Prize, but it, it's really quite unbelievable that they, the mainstream press forced to call something good, something good. I mean, uh, that's just uh, really kind of, uh, you know, unbelievable that uh, they actually had to do it. Plus, they also had the part where the three uh, Americans held in North Korea also released Donald Trump and Vice President Pence, Pence and the wives all met there at the airport at uh, 2.30, 2 uh, o'clock in the morning. Uh, actually, uh, just an, an unbelievable um, feat that, uh, I mean, nothing's really happened in North Korea since the, uh, the, the truce, which wasn't really the word in the end, they just had a truce since Truman. That's quite stunning. And the, the mainstream press, at least some of it, at least USA Today, forced uh, to, uh, forced to uh, uh, call something good, good. Uh, of course, everybody's in a tizzy about this. Uh, Trump withdraws uh, the U.S. from the U.S. from the, the Iran deal. This is widely reported on uh, Tuesday, the uh, 8th of May. Boeing contracts in jeopardy. Uh, new sanctions uh, put on Iran. Some of the thoughts I had here. Uh, Trump, uh, strongest sanctions we've ever put on a country. Uh, they're talking about regime change. Uh, there's a memo or a note, some notes released out from that, that they're talking about regime change. Well, sure, they want a positive regime in Iran. Actually, when Trump talked, he actually talked to the Iranian people. The mainstream media just melted down, will not admit the Iran deal was the nuclear deal to curtail their nuclear ambitions were, was never signed. And that's a statement of fact, folks. This isn't Iran bashing. This isn't, you know, pumping Israel. This is what it is. And to me, when you have a $150 billion deal that's not signed, sure sign of fraud. And I think in some cases, treason here in America and elsewhere. And I think everybody got something out of the Iran deal. They didn't care about the same insurance. And I allow me to say, here's the, here's the letter to Mike Pompeo. From the Kerry State Department, this was in, uh, you know, in November of uh, 2015. Hold on, let me see if I can get it to focus in. Uh, you see the State Department, this is to Pompeo. Uh, it, you know, this is the letter that said, hey, it wasn't signed, and, uh, you know, it's not, in, it's not uh, a, a legally binding or signed, but that doesn't mean we can't enforce it, which is totally ridiculous. It was not signed. And I think a lot of people, let's start with this. I think a lot of high government officials in multiple countries cashed in. I think people got bribed. Uh, that's what I think. I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't for 100% sure tell you exactly how it happened. Um, but I think people got bribed. I think there were contracts uh, given, lucrative contracts. I think there were kickbacks. I think that's the reason why Europe is freaking out. I think they are, are, are just as at risk in the Western world uh, as the United States and all the Obama uh, administration, John Kerry. I want to talk about him just more in a second. Uh, you know, Merkel, I, we talked about Merkel, uh, you know, and uh, Macron coming over and, the, you know, the angst in the UK, uh, even though Theresa May wasn't, uh, you know, the prime minister when this happened, it was Cameron. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I think people in Iran, uh, you know, made out like bandits uh, with this whole deal. And now sanctions are coming back on. And, uh, you know, there's no country on earth that's more devastating to give you sanctions than America, the largest country, the largest economy on the planet, still today. And, you know, Kerry, um, John Kerry, Secretary Kerry, I've said this before in multiple weekly news wrap-ups, with this Iran deal, I think he did something criminal. I think he did, he, you know, they, they got kicked. I don't know how, how it happened, but I think it happened. Dave, Dr. Dave Janda from Operation Freedom is going to be the a guest on the early Sunday release, and he has some insight and some, some sourcing and contacts on this. But Kerry, I mean, you got to wonder, he can't do anything. He can't say, they're talking about John Kerry's over in Iran trying to save the deal. Really, a save an unsigned deal? 
You know, when, when he was pressed in Congress and elsewhere in the media, he didn't know much about the deal. Secretary of State. I guess he knew about the pallets of money. But imagine this now. You're Iran. You had $150 billion, maybe more, on the table. The vultures in the West, in Russia and, and China, everybody wants a piece. Everybody wants something. They want, uh, you know, lucrative contracts or, you know, their officials want bribes. Everybody wants some donations to, I don't know, whatever. Um, donations, <laughs> bribes, kickbacks. But, but, you know, you're Iran. And you knew you had $150 billion minimum sitting in the kitty. And people in America got money. People in the UK got money. People in uh, uh, France got money. People in Germany got money, Russia, China, and all of a sudden Trump comes in and kills the deal, and you're back to having sanctions. Ooh, ooh. Now, if you're Iran, you're going to say, hey, you weasels, you got your money. We had sanctions relief for three years, and we got them back on us now. What's up? You think Kerry might be over in Iran telling people in China, people in uh, Iran to uh, hey don't 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 spill the beans, don't 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 tell what happened. Yeah, you know, maybe Iran gets uh, you know comes out and says, hey Donald Trump, you want to find out what happened in this deal? The reason why nobody signed it. Here's what happened. Hey, uh, how, how about the Trump administration calls up Iran and says, hey, listen, you want to break on sanctions? Tell us who got the money in this deal. I think that's what Kerry was doing over there. Couldn't fix it. Totally unsigned. He knows it. He's playing stupid so he can say, oh, that went on? I didn't know any of that. It's fraud, folks. You don't have a deal like that. No signatures. It's total fraud. I think uh, Iran is feeling uh, pretty screwed right now. They ponied up them. I mean, who, much, who knows how much they actually got back? Did they get $75 million, billion back? Did they get $100 billion? Did they, you know, what did they get back? How many people took a chunk of that digital money that was uh, that they had a holding against Iran to try to get them in line? Huh? How much money did they get back? You know, they figure, hey, listen, you're taking all this money. And I said before, this is how they got the deal where they got pallets of money. Hey, you took uh, 50 billion. Can't we have a couple of billion on pallets? We need it. <laughs> Total fraud. And that's going to get exposed more and more as we go on. Uh, I want to come up with this. It's another big win this week. Five most uh, wanted uh, ISIS leaders captured. Uh, you know, it's funny how we went on and on and on with this for years. Since I, I started at USA Watchdogs in 2009, probably since, I don't know, 2010, 11. I'm talking about all the, uh, you know, the, the uh, ISIS and, uh, and connections and the gun running and how we're not knocking them out and we're letting them sell oil and their U.S. vehicles are bought at auction, old plumbing trucks, and they end up getting sold to Turkey and then they have an ISIS machine gun mounted on the back. This went on for the entire Obama administration. Trump, Trump pretty much knocked that out in about a year. And now we got five most wanted ISIS leaders captured. Um... You know, it, it, this is cut off the head, uh, cut the head off ISIS. You know, uh, Obama did nothing for eight years. And I want to address something that's been floating around since uh, Trump, before he got elected. You know, he's an agent of the Rothschilds, an agent of the uh, of the uh, of the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. He's a shield, really. Well, let me tell you, uh, the Iran deal that he just backed out of, that was something the Rothschilds wanted. That was something the uh, New World Order people wanted. Let's just call them that. The, um, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership that he backed out of, that was something the uh, New World Order people, call them the Rothschilds, wanted. The Paris Climate Accord, that phony thing, you know, where uh, China and India with 2.6 or 7 billion uh, people get to continue polluting till the year 2030 while America pays for it. Yeah, that was another construct of the Rothschilds, New World Order, Luciferians. You pick, your, pick your poison. Did Trump have dealings with the Rothschilds? He sure did. Did they bail him out? Well, they they could let him go down and get nothing or bail him out and get some of their money back. I mean, in that world, Donald Trump's world, where you're talking about uh, millionaires and billionaires, that's a small world. 
That ain't the world of, you know, me, blue collar Greg, who's got a general studies degree, whose dad was a machinist, and I'm proud of my father. Uh, you know, that's not, uh, that's, our world is big. There's lots of us middle, poor, deplorables out there. Donald Trump's world's a lot smaller than that. Did he run into people he didn't like but did business with anyway? Yeah, I'd say he did. But let me tell you, Donald Trump, I mean, uh, you know, have you heard about Hillary Clinton? Uh, you know, there are limits on the Second Amendments, as I've said with this uh, Chris Wallace interview, and limits on the first two. Hey, that's not what Donald Trump's about. He's up there standing in front of the NRA saying, go, hey. He wants uh, regular people to have weapons, to have their rights. The Illuminati, the, the Rothschild, they don't want that. And I know about the genie oil uh, in the Golan Heights. Listen, when the Golan Heights was captured because it was a strategic location after the Arabs attacked them in 67 and 73, uh, you know, they were never going to give that back. So, yeah, genie oil owned by the Rothschilds. Yeah. Okay. The Golan Heights is never going back to the, to the Arabs. It's strategic high ground and Israel will never, mark my words, ever give it up in any kind of a treaty. They'll have to take it and it's going to be tough. And that's what I wanted to get to next. So, so this, all this talk about Donald Trump, you know, when he first started, he had no track record. Well, now he does. Now he does. And it's decidedly un-New World Order, un-Rothschild, uh, uh, un-Luciferian, un-globalist. Uh, uh, you know, he's making jokes about Gary Cohen, who does admit he's a globalist. They got rid of Gary Cohen at, at Goldman Sachs. Does Trump have to work with some of these swamp creatures? Some, yes, I guess, yes. He's, he, you got to give and take, and sometimes you have to give stuff you don't want to give up to get ahead. Uh, listen, uh, Donald Trump, compared to what we could have had with Hillary Clinton, I mean, we'd be loading up FEMA camps, the economy would be imploding, we probably would be in World War III already, uh, we'd, we'd be uh, you know, kowtowing to the Paris Climate Accord, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, um, you know, uh, we, we'd probably have bills in Congress to get rid of all the guns. Uh, you know, I did, listen, what we were facing with Hillary Clinton was a, and the Rothschilds backed Soros, Rothschilds backed Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, the Obama administration, John Kerry, all these crazy deals. They backed it. They backed it. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm just happy. Is he perfect? No. Do I agree with everything he does? No. Does he do some embarrassing, embarrassing things? Yes. Heck of a lot better than Hillary Clinton and the Marxist communist Democrats. Uh, now, the, you know, we got one place, you know, cooled down, uh, the Korean Peninsula, which looks like it's going pretty good. Uh, and then we have the Middle East. Iran uh, blitzed. Uh, and this is Israel hits uh, Iran's Syrian bases with 70 missiles, killing at least 23 fighters. Uh, they, they supposedly had 50 some odd targets. Uh, fighters, uh, you know, at least 23 fighters, and these are people the Iranians are training with. They have their own Quds forces and other people there, generals. Uh, and vowing uh, it, if it rains in Israel, it pours in Iran. Now, they're making a direct threat against Iran, their homeland. Israeli fighter jets have bombed military bases, munitions, warehouses uh, in uh, Syria in revenge for Iranian attacks on the Golan Heights. There we are, the Golan Heights again. And, you know, I want to point something out to you. Israel is attacking Iranian bases in Syria. Now, let that sink in. Where did they get that money to, uh, to uh, build? Reportedly, there are 10 Iranian Syrian bases. Where did they get that money? Oh, yeah, the Iran deal. Yeah, the nuclear deal. Right. Right. Yeah, there. Uh, listen, if Israel was building bases in eastern Iraq, uh, you'd have uh, uh, the, the UN involved. You'd have a global uproar. You'd have unbelievable. But Syria building bases so they can attack uh, 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 Israel, that's okay. That's not, that's not a problem. That's not a problem at all. And, uh, and here are the bases. Here's more news stories. This came out in, uh, in, in, Fe in February. And, of course, nobody really saw, saw anything about it. Iran has 10 military bases in Syria, two near the Israeli border, training 20,000 fighters. This is a Breitbart story. Training militias from Bashar al-Assad's regime for a future war with the Jewish state. 
A future war with the Jewish state. That's like a big stretch, isn't it? Having all those bases there. Well, what else would they have in there for? But well, what happens if somebody, you know, maybe laid it out a few years ago? You know, somebody in Iran, somebody really high up in Iran, laid out the fact they wanted to destroy Israel and laid it out in some something you could sink your teeth in. So, you know, there wouldn't be any mistranslation like they've said for years. Oh, yeah, that's Farsi. You mistranslated it. That's really not what they said in Iran. Yeah, okay. So here we go, and I might I just bring you back to this. Iran publishes a book on how to outwit U.S. and destroy Israel. This is a New York Post story uh, back in uh, September of 2015. The Ayatollah al-Khamenei has published a new book called Palestine, a 416-page uh, screed against the Jewish state. A blurb on the back cover uh, credits Khamenei as the flag bearer of jihad to liberate Jerusalem. Uh, now, incidentally, the uh, U.S. Embassy is going to move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem next week. I'm sure that's not going to settle things down, but what the heck, Trump Tump is bold and beautiful. Khamenei makes his uh, position clear from the very start. Israel has no right to exist as a state. This is the supreme leader in Iran, and last I checked, he's still there. And now they're building 10 military bases, uh, you know, uh, on and near the Israeli border to attack Israel. And they did attack Israel. And Israel is retaliating. Now, this could get out of control. Uh, you know, Russia is a, a backer of Iran. China is a backer of Iran. Uh, China trades with Iran. I mean, China helped. You know, this, uh, this North Korean deal didn't happen. Without China doing something for it, Trump is threatening, you know, trade sanctions, trade war against China. They have a lot of debt. Uh, as, you, as you've um, been hearing, China's uh, debt grew by, I don't know, 40. They're, they're, in 20 years, it grew from a trillion to 43 trillion. They have, they have exploded uh, their debt in tens of trillions of dollars in debt. And I don't know how they're going to pay that back. Yes, I know they have a gold yuan or they have a gold, uh, you know, they're going to, they're, they want to be in the SDR and the strategic drawing rights currency and all that. But dollar's still king, uh, last I checked. And that doesn't mean the dollar couldn't get knocked off its throne. That doesn't mean the dollar couldn't inflate. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, doom and gloom out there for the dollar. I think as the third world or the emerging markets get into trouble, uh, the dollar could catch a bid. Uh, that doesn't mean that everybody should feel all warm and fuzzy about uh, with a $20 trillion deficit and $21 trillion missing, as Dr. Mark Skidmore, you know, something like $40 trillion in, in debt units out there that we know of. And so, you know, what countries uh, like Russia and China are doing, along with very wealthy people, and that doesn't just include uh, people overseas, but people in America are, uh, and these are wealthy people. These are people that don't buy coins, they buy bars. And they're buying gold. So, uh, you know, here we have this uh, next story here is a CIA nominee. I'm not going to say much about this. Says torture doesn't work. This is Gina Haspel. You know, Brennan came up with this whole torture thing uh, when he in his reign or just before his reign. And he approved it, John Brennan, the former CIA director. And, uh, you know, it, 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 listen, this is the first female CIA nom nominee in history. Do you think the Democrats really are going to vote her down? Come on. And you're worried about waterboarding people, and I think they have three on record waterboarding to get information, which isn't right. I don't, I'm don't. i not for torture, uh, but I'm darn sure not for the drone murder program, which occurred during most of the, of the first and uh, much of the second uh, Obama term, where they killed 3,000 people without any due process, including American citizens, and boys, that 16-year-old boys, that were targeted specifically, not killed in collateral damage. And the, you know, the Obama drone murder program, where he bragged about he was good at killing people, you know, the Democrats are all, oh, you waterboarded some people. Well, she's, no, I didn't sign. I was read into it for the, for a year, she says. Uh, you know, and no, I don't believe in that, but that wasn't, I didn't do that. I'm just an employee there working. I was down the, the chain. Listen, this Gina Haspel chick is probably a good pick, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and this is, I don't know much about her. And she's probably a good pick because Pompeo was over at the CIA, and he's now Secretary of State. And there is no way Donald Trump would have nominated her unless Mike Pompeo, and he called him and said, who do you like? And he would say, I like this Gina Haspel. I think she'll work for you and she won't work against you. And I think she's going to be confirmed. This is a much ado all about nothing that they're going to 
The Democrats are going to vote down the first woman CIA director. Republicans couldn't make hay with that come the midterm elections, could they? She's going to be in. Mark my words. She's going to be in. Uh, I do want to tell you a little bit about the newspaper. You know, I've been telling you for a long time about the thought shaping and, and you know, about the, what they want you to believe. And if you don't believe what they believe, there must be something wrong with you. You, What? You don't believe in abortion? You don't... You, you don't believe in the whole LGBT, whatever it is? Well, first of all, let's talk about the blue wave. And I'm calling it the blue fizzle. That's another construct where they came up with this. We have the blue wave. And I think, listen, the, the early on uh, wins they had, I think there was voter fraud. I think there's election fraud. They do it in every election. I mean, Project Veritas had Bob Kramer, who was going to the White House and meeting with Obama on camera saying, yeah, we cheat. Yeah, we, we, we have to make sure that, you know, the Democrat National Committee is not tied to this cheating. Well, yeah, we, oh, yeah, we cheat. Oh, yeah, we cheat. On camera, Project Veritas in 2016 and, you know, before the November election. And so and here we have my local newspaper. And, uh, wow, no blue wave. Ninth and 13th district wins. Give Democrats hope. What happened to the blue wave? Well, let me tell you what happened to it. It fizzled. That was a lie. Another big mainstream media lie. The blue wave. Right. Let me get this straight now. The blue wave is going to float on uh, repealing the Second Amendments. They can't get, they can't even get 40% of Democrats to vote for that, let alone blacks and whites and Latinos. Uh, 10, 20%. You can't, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a downer. Uh, you're going to, so you're going to go with uh, a, a repeal of the uh, Second Amendment. That ain't going to work. You're going to go with a universal basic income, money for everybody, federal government jobs, a job for everybody. Uh, you're going to go with, um, a, uh, you know, all this crazy uh, stuff. And I don't see how you sell that. I mean, you're going to try to do away with all this stuff and uh, go against people's rights and raise taxes. You're going to run on raising taxes. You're going to run on taking people's rights away? You're going to run on Marxism? That's a tough sell. So my prediction is, mark my words, come the uh, November 2018 election, the Democrats will have to resort to cheating. Here's another uh, story I wanted to bring you up in my crazy uh, ultra left-wing liberal newspaper. You know, when you call them and tell them, hey, listen, why don't you just uh, quit pushing this thought shaping uh, and this, uh, you know, this, these crazy ideas down all of our throats? Well, here's one. Here's one. This is on the front page of the Greensboro News and Record. Making community where there is some. Community, yes, that's right. The new LGBTQIA center place where people can connect and relax. And let me read you what this is about. It's a new center. Uh, uh, it's an exercise that instructor Keith uh, Dorman in the midst of voice training seminar at the Guilford Greens Foundation's new community center uses to help transgender people choose a sound that matches their new identity. Let me read that again. We're spending tens of thousands of dollars here in the Greensboro area uh, to, uh, for a new community center to help transgender people choose a sound that matches their new identity. So if you've uh, a woman that turned into a man, you need to have a deeper voice. And if you're a man that turned into a woman, well, you need to have a lighter voice. And uh, the article goes on that uh, to say, and this is the, the craziness that huh, we're supposed to be happy we're wasting all this money. You know how many people use this uh, where they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on? You know how many people use this uh, last month? 113. You know, what the mainstream media wants you to believe is that, well, everybody's, half the people are gay. And there's, there's probably 20, 30 percent that are, that are, you know, uh, transgender. Really? I think there's not more than 3 percent if you uh, look at these figures from the Centers for Disease Control. No, I'm not calling it a disease, but I, that's who has the figures. And it's like a couple of tenths of a percent for transgenders. That's how much the size of the pop. So Greensboro is wasting money. And this is the liberal, I'm just using this as the, this is everywhere, folks. The cuckoo time of the liberal thought process. We're doing something for the LGBTQIZZBDH. You know, they're doing this because they want it to be bigger than what it really is. They know it's small, a very small amount of people. Uh, the uh, LGBTQ 
I, it, I, this is worth it. I'll just just give me a second here. Indulge me. Uh, and I'll tell you what that the LGBT. Okay, it's the um, the LGBTQI, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transvest, transgender, queer, or questioning, intersex, and asexual or allied. They're spending tens of thousands of dollars on this lunacy that affects a couple of tenths of the U.S. population, and likely it's the same throughout the world. Wasting tax dollars on cuckoo time. Uh, I don't, I haven't talked about the uh, Stormy Daniels thing because I think it's, it's not much of a story, and it's hard to discern what's the truth and what's what are lies about it. Did he pay a porn star one hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars? Looks like it. Uh, did he do it ten, twelve, thirty? I don't know. Multiple years, more than ten years ago, way before he ran for president. I, I, I maybe, probably. I don't care, and a lot of other people don't care either. So I haven't been talking about it just because I just don't think it's much of a story. It's not going to get him impeached. You know, the Mueller investigation is just is fizzling. But I want to read this to you. Um, this is the people I used to work for. CNN's May ratings already collapsed by 20-plus percent. This is a Breitbart story. Uh, with uh, three weeks of May still remaining, the Stormy Daniels Network, and they're being tongue-in-cheek at CNN, a Stormy Daniels Network might be able to come back, but as of right now, the month is looking like it could be a serious Humiliation for CNN. I mean, they have, I don't know, they've had the uh, Stormy Daniels uh, attorney on like 60 times in a month or something. I mean, it's crazy. Now there are questions about his legitimacy as a, a lawyer that it may be in legal trouble and might have his license pulled. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, you know, for things that he's, he's uh, allegedly done. Uh, there's also questions about who's paying him. It, Stormy Daniel says it's not her. Well, who's paying this guy? I mean, lawyers are not cheap. Three, four, five hundred dollars an hour, depending. If you get a, a big, big time lawyer, uh, a lot of time uh, with this case, especially all the time he's on, um, he's on Trump. He says they're donations that he's getting and money from his client. Well, his client says that's not true. He's not getting any money. But it's you know, and I'm not covering much. But anyway, so I'm not covering that very much. I don't think it's, I don't think it's something you need to know about. And no, I'm not trying to restrict your, uh, your information, but as uh, Dennis uh, uh, Miller said, after Clinton and the cigar and doing everything in the White House and him losing his law license and he lost a court case for $800,000, what Trump did long before he got in the White House, does anybody care? Nobody cares. No, nobody cares. Uh, I will tell you something I think is a problem, and it's interest rates. Um, I, I'm, you know, I keep looking at the data. And we get all kinds of conflicting reports of the data. You know, I brought this up with Michael Pinto that, you know, on one side we have a tight labor market and, and unemployment is going down. And it actually is even on, even with John uh, Williams, but not as much as the government numbers uh, go down. But, but one of the things I worry about is this 10-year treasury, and, and it's at 2.94%, so it's really close to 3%. And every time it gets to 3% or a little over 3%, bam, it gets knocked down. And uh, is a yield curve inversion coming? I've been talking to my friend Gregory Manorino at TradersChoice.net, and he says, "Hey, listen, you know they are uh, they're, they're killing the uh, the bond market. I mean, they, you know this thing gets close to three percent, the ten-year Treasury, which is how thirty-year mortgage rates are set. They don't. It's funny that you ought to set it off the thirty-year bond, as most people would think, but they they set thirty-year mortgages here in America off the ten-year, mostly off the ten-year and LIBOR also, but but off the ten-year." And uh, every time it gets close to, uh, you know, 3%, bam, it gets knocked down. The bonds get bought. So Manorino's telling me this, and they're just buying the bonds. They just won't let it go up. Is that the line in the sand? I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, the uh, I have another friend of mine who's in the kind of the banking business. He says, listen, man, there's no doubt about it. The labor market is tight. That said, he says, there's no liquidity. There's no cash for, for, for stuff for most small businesses. That's what he's talking about, not corporate America. And he says, but the labor market is tight. There's no doubt about it. But how tight is it? Here's something off John Williams 
page. And, you know, this is what it looked like most of the Obama administration. It went up, 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 up. It never went down. It went up and stayed up most. And then Trump came into office and it did go down. It went from 23 to around 21.5% as of uh, earlier this month. Now, if you look at the government numbers, this is the U6, so it's down below, I don't know, 10%, 7%, 8%. And if you look at the what's normally the the unemployment rate, the U3 is what they call it, uh, it's down to around uh, 4%. Uh, now, in listen, unemployment has gone down. Even with shadowstats.com, it's gone down, but it's still high. And so, uh, you know, I think uh, Donald Trump is doing everything he can to bring money back to America, to start drilling oil, to, uh, you know, uh, having a product to export. Uh, it looks like we're going to be an oil exporter, the world's biggest oil exporter, by about the year 2020. Uh, so, I mean, that's all things that Trump is doing. And I know that I know there's uh, there's a big push and pull. I mean, that, listen, if, if Trump wouldn't have gotten in, I think the economy would have would have tanked. And that's where it was heading. It was going to tank. And I think that's what the you know, world order global people wanted to do. They wanted to kill the country. They wanted to kill the economy. Now, we still have all this debt. But if we do, and I think we will sometime in Trump's presidency uh, in his first term or his second term. Uh, I'm not predicting a second term, but I think he'll get one. Uh, I think that uh, that we're going to have a, a crisis. I think Trump would like to put it off until after 2020, until the year, till after January 2021, you know, when he's inaugurated for the second term. I'm hoping that he can get through the midterm elections, but there's a lot of debt out there. And there's a lot of uh, uh, wild cards out there. This Israel and Iran thing is ugly. I mean, Israel's talking about attacking Iran not just hitting their bases in Syria. So that could, there's a lot of black swans out there, folks. So listen, stay vigilant. Uh, you know, make sure you guys are prepared. I mean, you, we might have some power outages. Uh, we might have a credit freeze. We might have a, you know, a, a downturn in the markets. Um, but there's nobody better probably out there. I mean, if you look at your choices, Hillary Clinton or, or Donald Trump, uh, Trump hands down. If we get into an, an economic problem, Trump's going to be the guy to be in there. Uh, he's trying to keep it up. So we'll see. I don't want to keep crying wolf, wolf, wolf. But man, listen, I mean, we got a lot of debt. That, you know, that's a fact. But so does China. And, you know, for the longest time, people thought, well, China, you know, they like to take us down. They take themselves down. And they have a lot to lose. They got, they got more debt uh, as a country faster than we do. Uh, they, they have a lot of debt. So, uh, so we're in a very precarious situation here. But folks... Uh, as I always say, uh, fear not. Prepare yourself mentally, physically, above all spiritually. Fear not. God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, are completely and totally in control. Listen, folks, I don't say that just for some kind of thing to say, some kind of catchy phrase or something like that. I say it because I mean it and I believe it. And so, you know, that's what the Luciferians want you to be. They want you to be fearful. They want you to be afraid. I want you to be informed. I want you to make good decisions. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, Nomi Prinz, uh, you know, who happened uh, earlier, uh, you know, this week, um, she, you know, she's talking about a Wall Street banker talking about getting out of debt and having gold and silver and some cash and, and uh, own things. And this is a former Wall Street, high up Wall Street banker. And so you should uh, listen to that. I mean, they, a lot of these people don't know, and I don't either. They don't know when this is going to happen. This got stalled off by Trump and the stuff he's doing to rev the economy up. And who knows, maybe the world will look at this like, uh, wow, they really are going to be the world's net exporter. How bad, how bad can you crash if you're the world's uh, uh, number one exporter of oil? And so, uh, so anyway, I'm saying all that to say this. Don't fear. Don't be fearful. Don't keep your mouth shut because you're fearful. Don't do it. Don't be. Uh, uh, don't uh, you freeze and and do nothing because you're fearful. Try to do something. Put yourself in a better position every day. All right. So then again. So and there again. I may I just say it again. Fear not. Protect yourself mentally, physically, above all, spiritually. Fear not. God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, are firmly in control. <laughs>